on the next episode of the sessions with DJ D Phoenix. I promise. Return visits by Sakronov, Republica. Dr. Robotov, the Blow Monkeys. And David Sterry of Real Life. And on his first visit to the Groove Zone, DJ Ross Teagan of Fizzodge. The stars are shining bright on the next edition of the Groove Zone, the sessions with DJ D. Phoenix. Coming Wednesday, April 13th at 12 noon Pacific Time at facebook.com slash Groove Zone. Don't miss it. better yeah 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 much better yeah okay. awesome well hello yeah. there mr egan hi right fill me you? in fill me in because i had an 8 a.m zoom i know that's what i that's your now what time is no. it back there is it in the no, afternoon I, I got a singer lives in new zealand and oh my um, i had to be online at 8 a.m and i didn't go back to bed and now i've got a new and then i got an appointment and then i got a Oh, oh my one goodness. of them. What, what what time is it there? And, oh, I've lost your sound. Wait a uh oh. Okay, well, I've we'll sing sound. for you. How's that? First of all, th Let Rusty, you thank you very much for putting some time yeah. aside. Totally. Okay, totally. I can hear you. Okay. Who, who else is here? This is Jeffrey. Uh, he goes by DJ Ducky. He's one of our DJs out Hello. of Seattle. Okay. And in where Seattle? Seattle. Seattle, yep. Oh, like like uh, where Fraser lives. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yes, yes, yes. Mm. Um, anyway, yeah, uh, Jeff is one of our DJs on the network, and um, and I'm Darren, and it's very nice to meet you officially. A pleasure. Mm. Pleasure. Thank you. Well, awesome. Thank you very much. Okay, are you playing my music on the cruise? Oh right? my gosh, am I playing your music? Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Amazing, amazing stuff. Um, as I've gotten a chance, especially uh, here recently, to kind of plow back through some of your uh, releases, you yeah. you have been putting out some fantastic, fantastic stuff. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And your collaborations and all that. Wow. I missed uh, that. I, uh, uh, I, I missed what you said, Ted. Oh. Let me check my... Uh, yeah, let That's me okay. check my um my Wi-Fi. Um, I just yeah, I mean you're cutting out, so yeah. I'm thinking. Ah, oh, I know why. Yeah, I got one. I'm a little giddy right now. <laughs> Two connections. I got one in the house. I got one in the bedroom. <laughs> Checking <laughs> network, but we're still connected. So we are. And I can yeah, okay. in, and that's yeah, all that we, counts. We, we yeah, can, if I move around the house, I have to change my Wi-Fi. That's all. I totally get that. Um, yes, been actually both uh, Ducky and I have been checking out uh, uh, your stuff. Um, did you hear from Canada? I did a track called "Breaking" um, with a girl called Shimmer Johnson. I saw. Um, yes, I saw that. Yeah, uh, the, the sort of seven or eight minute version of that, and then there's a dub version of that. Um, and she's really doing well now in Canada. Okay. She's a singer-songwriter, and I heard her sing this song called Break It. And then I made it all dark and electronic, and I'm really, really proud of that one. Uh, I, and then uh, Boy George, the track I did with Boy George. Yes. Turned to Dust. I don't know if you know, but that's basically about um, homophobia and, and body shaming. And... Uh, when I did the Blitz documentary soundtrack, okay, uh, I got Boy George singing David Bowie, Where Are We Now, live. That's on the album. Wow. And 
I got Boy George singing um, Turn to Dust vocal, which I put on my catwalk. Okay. Music that I made for people talking about people in the club. And I thought, well, they're all on the catwalk, aren't they? You know, so I did a track called Catwalk. And for some reason or other, Turn to Dust just worked perfectly with it but then i thought then i thought i wonder if i could mix the model by craft work with it so i did oh okay and then i i put them all together and i called it a non-stop electronic synth pop dub mix and i put it on <laughs> mix cloud it's on mix cloud and um have you, okay. heard of a band called, have you heard of a band called bush yes well, I, I discovered the lead singer, Gavin Rosdale, when he was a Camden Palace boy. Really? And I, I brought his band to Ibiza and put him on stage at the Coo Club. Wow. Anyway, he then um, formed Bush. Um, oh, my gosh. Yeah, really early career. But um, I'm early with all of them, you know, Madonna's first record. Um, yeah, everybody. Banner. Yeah, everybody, yeah. Yes. Um, so um, basically, Gavin, uh, his manager contacted me and said, I've just heard this nonstop electronic synth pop dub me. <laughs> and oh, my God, he was going, oh, I absolutely love it. I want you to work with the new artist that he's got. So, um, yeah, I'm trying to say I just keep making music and I'm so happy that people like yourselves actually hear it. But believe you me, when people do hear it, they really love it. Like when we were young, the track that I did. With awesome them. track. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's the Blitz one, isn't it? Yeah. It's all on the Blitz soundtrack. Okay. And okay. If, and if you go on the Blitz soundtrack, there's a track on it called Queer by Julia Bondar. And okay. if you go on YouTube and you see the video, it's a, a man, it's a, a man goes into a toilet and a woman comes out, bottom line. <laughs> Uh, well, that was that was us getting ready to go to the Blitz, you know. Right, <laughs> back, right. Yeah, you know, um, back in the day. Um, never. And basically all the tracks that are on it, there's a track called The Passenger, which is an electronic version in homage to Iggy Pop and David Bowie, The Passenger. Nice. Riding, riding around Berlin. It's by a band called Metroland. Okay. And then there is a 15 minute long neon lights oh. shimmering neon no. lights. I know that. Oh my gosh. Yeah, but I... this one is by Jonah Ma. It's okay. by Jonah Ma. And it's 15 minutes long in homage to Florian Schneider, who passed away. So all of these tracks, I managed to put them on this album. Wow. Um, and they're all new. You know, people watch this documentary about 40 years ago. Right. And then they hear, not many go and listen to the music. But when they do, they go, oh, my God, when we're young, it's so like, oh, it captures. And so I'm very proud of it. That's the bottom line. And, and, and honestly, I mean, you should be. It, it's amazing, though, because you really haven't stopped since your old days with Visage. I mean, like, you pretty much kept well, going. Well, DJ Ducky might might know that we all um <laughs> we all kind of stopped around acid house and uh, paul oakenfold and jeremy healy became big name jeremy was in haiti fantasy right and he, he got boy haiti george fantasy. yeah jeremy healy was haiti fantasy and wow. jeremy became a big dj princess julia became a big dj fat tony became a big dj and I became a father. <laughs> so I I loved um, uh, taking my break from nightlife, partying, alcohol, drugs, clubbing, and having uh, three boys. Wow. And uh, my daughter I had in 1988. Okay. Um, and I was estranged and very cut up and broken about all that um so i kind of cleaned up my life and then realized that 
I'd been robbed by everybody in the music business, and I thought, forget the music business. Oh, I'm no. not going to. I'm not. I'm not going to go back to the music business. And then I found out that Steve Strange was getting all my visage royalties as well. <laughs> and I thought, I just don't believe it. You know. Um, and then wow. Spanner Ballet did a tour and said, will you come on tour with us? Wow. And I said, all right. You know, all right. And then uh, I went to see a band in a pub and they were called LaRue. And yes. uh, I did a mix of Bulletproof. It's on my um, it's on my SoundCloud. Oh my god! Uh, but it it wasn't it wasn't um, accepted. And then Moby, I got to do a track with Moby. And then I did a band from New York. And I basically suddenly I'm back in the studio, you know. Wow! Um, and uh, yeah, one by one, I started to write songs, and. I've spent the last 2009 to 2022 being told by Universal Music Group, sorry, um, we're not going to pay you, mid Europe, Billy Curry, John McGeer, Dave Formula. We're only going to play Steve Strange. Get out. Who's passed, away. passed away. And his family have ignored all correspondence, all attempts. Huh. Yeah. Really? So, yeah, and I was even banned from the wedding. I was in Cardiff with Spanda Ballet. Yeah. And I was told, you're not welcome at the wedding. What the? Oh, that's... that's wow. Now, now Steve's well, been... I'm, I'm I sorry. I could have showed up with an invoice for 150 grand and said, well, can you give me the 150 yeah. grand? Fifty grand, and said, "Well, can you give me the hundred and fifty yeah. grand?" Stole? There you go. Wow! 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 Now, what year did Steve pass? It's still relatively recent, isn't it? Within just the last few years. Say that again. I'm sorry. What What year did Steve Strange pass? <laughs> I think it was about February two thousand and fourteen. I think it was. 50, I think it was twenty fifteen. 15, was it? yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. I was going to say I not was, too I was, on, I was on tour with Spanna Ballet at the time, yeah. That's right. Okay. I think it was February 2015. Okay. Maybe, yeah. Um, <laughs> I, if you were in a relationship with somebody, a wife or a partner, and they cheated on you, I only reacted like that. Meaning... I was like, Steve, I can't believe it. I can't believe I had all these children and, and my wife was sick and you were getting all my money and you lied to me for all those years. It's like that, you know. Oh, man. Um, I'm so sorry. But then that. all the Steve Strange fans really laid into me for being horrible to Steve Strange. And I was going, well, I'm sorry, but I love my wife who passed away in 2011. I'm sorry, but I didn't see Steve Strange for 20 years while I was with my wife and all my children. And I was going out and doing weddings and bar mitzvahs because I had no money. I'm really sorry. I was a little bit angry. Wow. So oh, then, then I found this bloke because in the 80s, I made a, a record with a band called Space who made magic. Oh, my Space. gosh. Love Space. Can't, yeah. can't track them down, but I love them. Well, that, mm. that, I remade Magic Fly on my Welcome to the Remix album. You can hear that. It's oh, wow. Okay. With, with Didier from Space. Okay. Anyway, um, a, a guy licensed all the Space records and was going to put out the Tender Force and Roman Romanelli, another album I made. Okay. And basically, he said, hey, why don't I finance a Visage album and then Steve can sign an agreement and pay you back all the money? Why don't you guys kiss and make up? Wow. So I said, okay. <coughs> I met with Steve. We did a TV program, like one of those kind of um, band reunited type things. Right. Okay. I, I, didn't, I, didn't, up, I didn't tell anyone. Uh, you know, I was all upset and I just went along with it, 
I started to write this album and I wrote a song with a band from um, LA called Nightclub, who I love. Okay, Nightclub. And uh, they're on tour right now in America. Okay. So I, I got hold of Emily and I said, I've written this song called Evermore. I really think um, you'd be a great singer. And um, I wrote another song and I got hold of Peter Hook from Joy Division. And I said, I think this song is really like um, uh, Joy Division New Order. And he called me back and said, I love it. Let me do my bit. And he played bass and he sang it. Wow. And then I wrote another song and it was good, but it's not right. It's a joke here. <laughs> I got I got that to Mijur and Mijur said it, it's good, but uh, let me let me write rewrite the verse, you know. We yeah. only had a we only had a chorus. And basically that was called Glorious. And then oh, I wrote okay. I wrote That's another really song. I wrote another song about relationships in nightclubs and all the years that i was the dj in a nightclub i would see single people meet people then i wouldn't see them for five years and then i'd see them again and i go hey what happened oh we broke up you know and then i wrote lonely highway okay. about people are now back on the lonely highway and that really, we really, really are the happiest when we are with another person. But we're doubt. also... For what had happened when the uranium... The most unhappy when we're with the wrong person. So, have it been in a toxic relationship, it's best to go back on the lonely highway. <laughs> <And> maybe, <laughs> yeah, maybe you know. Yeah. yeah, so I wrote that song. And... Um, I got it to Tony Hadley on the Spanner Ballet Tour, and I said, I've written this song. And he came back and said, it's great, but the end. And I said, well, do what you want. So then he did it. And then I'm a big fan of San Fran Disco, Paul Goodyear, DJ. Okay. And San Fran DJ, Disco, I went to San Francisco in 2018, and I met with Paul. Okay. And Paul does some amazing remixes. So I said, hey, Paul, <clears throat> why don't you do a mix on this track? And he did it. And that, they're all on my album, Welcome to the Remix. So the, bo the bottom line was, I had all those songs ready for the Visage album. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Wow. Until the guy phoned me up to say, hey, uh, Rusty, uh, Steve owes you a hell of a lot of money. And I went, yeah. But it's not me. It's me, Dave, John McGeer, Barry Adams, you know. Right, uh, right. Gary Barnacle, the sax player with Soft Cell. <laughs> um, he's on a couple of shows. There's about seven of us from the third album. And he okay. had all the royalties. So he goes, well, for him to pay all that money back, you're going to have to sell a hell of a lot of albums. Because he's only prepared to pay 50% of his income. Okay. Uh, he's got to have something to live on. Right. I said, I, I don't care as long as he agrees to pay back right. the money. I don't care if it takes forever. Um, he goes, well, while you've been busy, Steve and I have registered the name Visage and the Blitz Club. And we don't need you anymore. Whoa. Oh, my God. Oh, my and, God. Horrible. And we've written the album. Wow. And who we've was this? We've stolen your song. We've stolen one of your songs called Dreamer. Because it wasn't your song. It was Arno Carsten's song. And I said, yeah, I met Arno Carsten at the Arno White Rock Festival. And I said, I love your song, but the chorus could be better. And he said, man, if you want to do a cover and rewrite the chorus, go for it. So basically, Dreamer is Arno Carstens and Youth from Killing Joke. Oh, my okay. mate, Youth, okay. who produced it. And, um, and me and Gerard O'Connor, who I did two other songs with. Amazing songwriter friend. He was in a band. I found them on um, Island Records. Okay. Uh, they, they didn't even release a record. I just found him. Anyway, the point I'm trying to get to is, <laughs> so now 
I've got all these great songs, Glorious, Lonely Highway. I've got all these songs for Steve to sing. Dreamer, Love is Coming My Way. I've got this whole lot. And then they go, no, we're going to do a Visage album. Ouch. And I said, well, great. You haven't got any songs and Steve can't sing. Off you go. (laughs) Anyway, they did four Visage albums. It never ended. Really? It never ended. Oh, the guy milked it. The T-shirt. Every colour vinyl. Wow. The guy milked it. He just went for it. And I released an album called Welcome to the Dance Floor. Um, Yeah. Which nine out of ten people said, well, actually, we've got a campaign over here. I can't believe it's not butter. Okay. It's a, it's a campaign. Okay. And it's basically margarine, right? Right. I, but yeah. I can't believe it's not butter. It's so good. So I replaced it with, I can't believe it's not bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. And I kind of did a bit of joking, you know. So while I'm joking, unbeknownst to me, the liar is not lying. Steve was actually ill. And oh. I just thought he'd lied so much. Everything he ever said was a fucking lie. I was going, oh, yeah, sure, yeah, you're in hospital. Oh, oh I'm in hospital. I don't want to talk about the money. I, I didn't know it was for you, even though it's clearly written. Yeah. <laughs> wow. You know, and words to that effect. And you're being horrible about me. <clears throat> what do you mean I'm being horrible? I can't believe it's not bad. You're not Visage. <laughs> I said, Brian Ferry is not Roxy Music. Holly Johnson is not Frankie Goes to Hollywood. Steve Strange is not Visage. You're not Visage. No. You can, Tony Hadley is not Spanner Ballet. No. Mark Armand is not Soft Cell. You're no. not Visage. Right. Your bloody manager who's giving you money while he robs everybody. Yeah. He's not yeah. being honest to you, Steve. He's wow. not being honest. You're being robbed. So sad. No, I'm not. No, you're just jealous because I'm having success. I said, Steve, get on with it, mate. We're all being robbed by that guy. And then, Space, contact me. We've been robbed. We're suing him. I go, oh, no, he's robbing everyone. Same guy? The same guy. Oh, you're kidding? Wow. Now now he's on to a flock of seagulls. Oh, no. Oh, no. We we just spoke with Mike uh, within the last few weeks. Yeah, Yeah. he's the the guy putting out their records now. Um, No way. He owns uh, about 50 record labels. They're all based out of an offshore company in India or something. This guy sounds really shady. Really, wow. really shady. Oh, he's really shady. Um, um, I know where he lives. I've got his home address. <laughs> <laughs> company, well, company's house, you know, all the companies are registered. Rusty, anyway, I'll edit that part out. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, I, well, it, it's, so, well, here, here's the way I look at it. Just write and record better music. Okay. So there's no money anymore. I could have a million stream. In 2018, I did two tracks with you two, who I absolutely love. Right. You can go online, listen to them. There'll be uh, trolls. There'll be people online. What's Rusty here you do with you two? I hate electronic music. I'm a rock fan. I don't care what anybody says. I just do what I love. Oh, yeah. Who, who cares what the trolls say? You know, you have a radio show, you play a record on the radio, somebody tweets, what's that idiot playing that crap for? Right, they right. told They told me that when I was playing Craftwork. Yes, oh, you're kidding me. Yeah, you people, you know. Depeche Mode are never going to get anywhere, and, and Soft Cell, I promoted all those bands when nobody wanted to know. As a matter of fact, I was signed half of them. Wow. <laughs> anyway, back wow. to reality, back to wow. two. 2022. Yeah. Um, I'm currently writing forever. And I was online today with Chris Payne. Have you ever heard of him? Not sure. 
Right, Chris Payne was the keyboard player in Gary Newman's Chubway Army. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 And then while he was touring with Billy Curry, he came up with an idea. Billy Curry, Chris Payne and Cedric, Gary Newman's drummer, came into our studio at Martin Russians and demoed it for the Visage album. It was just an instrumental piece of music. Wow, okay. And then Midge and me said, that's great, let's try that, put a kick drum on it. Yeah, okay, a little hi-hat, okay. That's great, and I said, let's get my girlfriend to speak in French. What's she gonna say? Well, she'll just say what you say, one man alone, black, whatever, in French. She just sounds amazing. And then I get my drum. 